Hello and welcome to this video on how to specify a latent transition analysis in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to multivariate statistical methods such as latent class analysis, latent transition analysis and structural equation modeling. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button, to leave a comment in the comment section and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my weekly newsletter as well as other videos and workshops. In this video here I want to show you the syntax in M plus for specifying a latent transition analysis for two time points. So here I have as usual my data set that contains my items. In this case I'm analyzing a set of binary test items from a mental rotations test to examine solution strategies and performance differences across time using latent transition analysis. And so the analysis here is based on 12 items that were assessed on two measurement occasions. The items MRT PR1 through MRT PR12 are the ones that were measured at pretest, so um, time one, so that's why they're called PR. And then the other ones, the remaining 12 ones, are the same items assessed at the second time point, so at post tests, and therefore they are labeled as PO. These variables here in M plus are labeled as categorical because they are binary. So you would do that whenever you have binary variables for a latent transition analysis. Also, if you had ordinal variables with more than two categories, you would also list them under categorical. If you were analyzing continuous latent class analysis indicators or latent transition indicators, then you would just leave out the categorical statement because M plus by default assumes that variables are continuous unless you include a specific command such as the categorical command to tell M plus otherwise. So you can use binary indicators, you can use ordinal indicators, or you could use continuous indicators in a latent transition analysis in M plus and also a mixture. So you could have some binary variables, some ordinal variables and some continuous variables. The classes subcommand in the variable command serves to define the latent classes to be used in the analysis in a cross-sectional latent class analysis and cross-sectional latent, latent profile analysis, excuse me, you only have one latent class variable and that is different in latent transition analysis where there's a latent class variable for each time point. And so therefore in the classes command here we have multiple latent class variables, in this case two because we have two time points. So C1 will be later on defined to be the latent class variable for time one and C2 will be defined to be the latent class variable for time point two. Each one of these in my example has two classes. So the number that is given here in parentheses, parentheses indicates the number of classes that we want to allow at each time point. And the, this need not be the same number. So if you have a hypothesis that over time you have more or fewer classes, you could have for example, for at first you could have two classes and then later three classes, for example. So that's all possible. You don't need to have the same number of classes at each time point, but typically that's what we assume unless we have some specific hypothesis. Type equals mixture needs to be specified in the analysis command. Otherwise M plus wouldn't um, run a latent transition analysis as a mixture distribution model. So this command type equals mixture in conjunction with the classes command tells M plus that this is going to be a mixture distribution or latent class model with multiple latent variables. And so then later M plus will expect you to define how each latent class variable is being measured by which items and so that's what we then specify in our model command. First of all in the model command we have this overall statement here within these percent signs and so under the overall command we specify that the C2 class variable is regressed on the C1 class variable in a multinomial logistic regression analysis. Remember that class variables are nominal variables and so 
Therefore, when we regress one class variable on another class variable, then that's a logistic regression. In this case, it's actually not a multinomial logistic regression because the class, uh, the class variables have only two categories. So it's a binary logistic model here. But if you had more than two classes, then it would be a multinomial logistic regression. And so one um, outcome of this multinomial or binary logistic, in this case, regression of the time two class variable on the time one class variable are the latent transition probabilities. So those are then estimated as a function of these logistic regression parameters. We can then determine how um, the transitions work from time one to time two. Now, if you had more than two time points, you would have another class variable here to specify under classes. And you would also in the overall statement then have another on statement that would say, for example, C3 on C2, because you would then also want to know the transitions between time two and time three. Below, we have time specific model statements that are needed to tell M plus how each latent class variable is measured because it's not obvious which items belong to which time point. We have to tell M plus so to say how the indicators relate to each latent class variable. And so obviously for C1, the time one class variable, we have the items that, well, we, we use the items that have the PR label here for pretest. So we have PR here and we have PR items here. And what we need to specify are these threshold parameters. The threshold parameters for the items are again logistic regression parameters, but this time they refer to the relationship between the latent class variable and the indicators. And so those then can be transformed into conditional response probabilities that characterize how the items, how the profiles are defined for each latent class. So these threshold parameters then directly can be transformed or um, can be calculated into um, conditional response probabilities that are then easier to interpret. And so here what we're doing is we're telling M plus that in each class, in each of the two C1 classes, we have these items as indicators and we label the threshold parameters with these labels P1 through P12. This is a label that I chose P here for parameter or probability. You could think of it that way as well. And so we have 12 items. And so we have 12 different threshold parameters for these binary items in each class. And what we want to do typically in a latent transition analysis is we want to hold the conditional response probabilities equal across time for measurement equivalence so that the classes will be the same at each time point and then it's easier to compare and easier to interpret the transition probabilities. And that's why we have to specify these labels here so that we can then later on pose equality constraints on them. And we need class specific statements because obviously each class has its unique pattern of item responses. So it has its own unique item threshold parameters that then correspond to the conditional response probabilities in M plus. The threshold parameters are specified with this dollar sign. And so notice that there's only one threshold for each item and that's because the items are dichotomous. They have only two categories. And so as a result, there's only one threshold parameter per item, per class, per time point. And this would be different if you had, for example, ordinal data with three or more categories, then you would have more thresholds, specifically always one threshold parameter less than the item has categories. And then you would also want to include labels for each threshold, for each additional threshold, make sure that these are also held equal across time. Here you can see that the model for C1, so our time one measurement model has the same labels for the thresholds in those two classes as the time two or C2 measurement models. So I gave the same labels P1 through P12, 
or and or P13 through P24 to set those conditional response probabilities equal across time. And then we have the exact two, same two classes at each time point, and that's called measurement equivalence. Of course, you should also test whether that's a reasonable assumption. So you should compare this to a model or the fit of a model where you leave out these labels so that the um, thresholds are freely estimated over time. And then look, uh, look at whether the assumption of measurement equivalence is really reasonable by comparing the fit of the models, for example, in terms of a likelihood ratio difference test or in terms of a BIC um, value comparison. So you can then see which model is preferred. So that's all we need to do in our model statement. We need to have the, the overall connection between the latent classes. You could think of that as being an autoregressive process where the time two class variable is regressed on the time one class variable to estimate the transition probabilities. And then we have our measurement model set up here with these time specific um, statements model C1 and model C2 where we assign the items to the corresponding latent class variables and where we also uh, specify these equality constraints as I showed you here for the um, threshold parameters so we have measurement equivalence across time. What we can also include and it's actually quite useful I think is the plot command. The plot command in M plus allows us to give a, to get a whole bunch of different types of plots. But here specifically, we would be interested in a profile plot that shows us the latent class profiles or specifically the conditional response probabilities for all items in all classes. And we can get such a plot by including not just the type equals plot three command, but also the series sub command that allows us to define where the items should appear in the plot here along the x axis. And then we get a line plot of the conditional response probabilities that we can then look at. And then for example, that allows you to check that your equality constraints were properly implemented because the profiles then should look the exact same uh, for time one and for time two, because the conditional response probabilities were set equal across time. Also, one other option that you have with latent transition analysis in M plus is to save class membership statistics. If you're interested, for example, in what the probability of a given individual is of belonging to a specific class pattern, then those probabilities of class membership can be saved to an external file. And that uh, works via the save data option, where first of all, you specify a file name of your choice where the, into which you want to save this information. And then you also include, or you can also include the sub command save equal C probabilities to tell M plus that what you want to save are the class probabilities and also the class assignment statistics. So then M plus will assign individuals according to their most likely latent class pattern. And so you can then determine for each individual what pattern they are most likely uh, or which pattern they most likely belong to. I hope you found this session useful to learn about the syntax in M plus for specifying a latent transition analysis model. Stay tuned for another video that I will post pretty soon on how to interpret the output for a latent transition analysis in M plus. I'm going to make a separate video on that because it's a pretty long output and so it will be a pretty long video and so I'll have that as a separate video up here shortly. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to hit the like button and also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next week.